Today is one of those days where I'm just feeling the big sad. <sighs> you know, my solution to that is put on a crap ton of blush and make something. So this is gonna be sort of just a little mini video, but it's something that I've been wanting to make for a while, which is my own little version of a Coraline doll. Coraline? Coraline. <laughs> it's just the right level of creepy and cute that I love. I just, I wanna do it, so I'm gonna do it. <laughs> I have some leftover supplies from when I made my baby Yoda. I have some clay that's just kind of sitting there and not being used. And also an excuse for me to watch Coraline again. Not that I need one. So I just wanted to make a simple, very cozy craft video. I'm basically following this image that I came across. I am going to make a little me. So as far as materials, I do have the polymer clay that I use for baby Yoda. I'll be using that for the head. And then I will be putting the head on a wire armature so that it's bendable and movable. The body I will probably be making out of this canvas material that I have. And then I have some yarn for the hair. And as far as everything else, I think I'm just going to use bits of scrap fabric that I have in my pile and just make little clothes, which <laughs> I think is probably what I'm most excited for because miniature anything, sign me up. Everyone needs a creepy little version of themselves. First things first, I do need to design what I want this little guy to look like. Probably important, so let's go to that phase. whole thing easier I am just going to explain the process here and then show you the corresponding clips I think that'll be the clearest way to talk about what I did here so first things first I made a little wire armature skeleton I stuck the tin foil head and I wrapped that around the wire armature head and then I quite simply just slapped on that clay and started sculpting the head And then after this was done, I stuck her in the oven <laughs> and waited about 30 minutes. And then I took her out and let her cool down. And then the next day I started making her a little body. So basically what I did for that was I took the canvas material that I had, almost did a sort of snow angel method where I just traced out along the armature wire. So that way I could sew the two layers and then turn them inside out and stuff them. So I did that and the turning inside out process was way too hard. I think I made it a little bit too thin. So I did it again and I made the channels a little bit wider. This did make her a little bit um, thicker, thick than my inspiration photo, but I don't know. I don't know if it was just the material or what, but turning it inside out was a little bit of a challenge. Neighbors looking at me. Don't look at me. So after the body was sewn and then turned inside out, I slid the armature skeleton into the body and then I, for the life of me, could not find the stuffing that I had previously used for other projects. So I ended up using fake spider webs left over from Halloween. And you know what? It worked fine. And it seemed sort of on brand for Coraline, so. <laughs> so I cut that up and stuffed it inside the body to give it a little bit more padding and stuffing. Then it was time for the paint job. Again, just following my inspiration, I started painting the face. This part. 
part is pretty simple. Um, I didn't go too far into shading and that kind of stuff, but I made the cheeks and nose rosy because why not? <laughs> Add a little bit of that rosiness onto the ears as well um, just because I figured it would look cute. Roughly painted the hands and then her little booties as well. After that was done it was time for making her little outfit. This was definitely what I was nervous about because I've never made little miniature clothes before. So for the materials, I went down into my fabric stash and just grabbed some materials I thought would work really well together. For the jacket, I went with a brown felt just because I didn't want to worry about aligning. The stiffer, the better kind of with the coat. For the skirt, I used this green fabric and I went and made just a full little circle skirt, keeping in mind the measurements of what I wanted. I know this isn't the proper way to do it, but it's a doll, so. Cut that out and then made a little waistband to connect the skirt to, velcroed it, and hemmed the bottom very messily, but... <laughs> And then for the shirt, I don't really have a good way of explaining how I did this. Same thing with the vest. I, it's basically just wrapping it around and drawing out where you want the cuts to be, much like draping it over a dress form, but very small version. And I'll have you know, there is not a drop of hot glue in this whole project, so. <laughs> I made the jacket as well, pretty much the same way, uh, making little pattern pieces. up having to hand stitch pretty much everything in this project except for the hem of the skirt just because my machine was not liking the small scale of this and then it was time for the hair which aside from the clothes I was definitely most nervous about I covered her head in contact cement and I did this because I figured it would be a lot cleaner than hot glue because hot glue always leaves lumpiness and strings everywhere. If you were to do this, you could definitely use super glue as well if you work fast. Cut out a bunch of strings of yarn and then once that got a little tacky, I just laid down the yarn in rows and that was about it. And then I just added some contact cement onto the forehead and made little loops for the bangs. Then I added a little bit of contact cement on the ends and a little bit above the ends. And then that allowed me to flip the ends of the hair up, creating a little loop, which I guess kind of sells the illusion of curls. And then finishing touches, I added some gloss onto the buttons and weathered the outfit a little bit to make it look a little bit older and more worn. And so I will show you the finished product. Okay, she's so cute. I definitely think she came out the right amount of um, cute and creepy for me. It's a little spooky, as we all should be. And her jacket's got like a little collar, and then um, she has like a little little vest with a little button. Her head shape is a little bit weird, but honestly, it's not that big of a deal. I think she's probably gonna be sitting in a bookcase, so. I wouldn't say this is a super quick craft. I think that if you were to make this for someone else as a gift or even just yourself, which I did, which I'm still trying to figure out if that's conceited or not, but yeah, it was a lot of fun and it made me feel a lot better. Sometimes I just get in a funk where I just think I need to make something, something cute and creepy. And so I did that and I feel better now. <laughs> hope you guys had fun watching this sort of mini video and I hope that if you do want to make your own version that this was at least helpful in getting started. So of course, if you end up making one, be sure to tag me because I would love to see because I am nosy AF. I love you guys whether you're new or old to this channel. If you're new here and you feel like sticking around, feel free to subscribe. I upload every Friday and sometimes Wednesday, like today, when I feel like putting out extra content. It's not quite as catchy. And I will see you in my next video. Bye!
Whoa, calm down there. Okay. Uh, I can't escape. Uh, don't look at me. Look at her. 